I always take inspiration from my older videos, and recently when I watched the Silent Hill Origins comparison again, I started wondering how many PSP games were ported to PS2, and then I wondered how well they were emulated. I did some research and discovered 16 games that jumped from Sony's handheld to its bigger cousin. I may have missed a few, but that's what I found. Anyway, I thought it would be fun if I did a face-off between the two emulators, just to keep things interesting. This puzzle game is called Tokobot. It feels distinctly Japanese and it takes some time to find your bearings. The controls especially can be challenging. The PS2 version looks a little bit better, but when upscaled to 1080p, the PSP version holds up well. However, the game has extra content on PS2. For example, at the end of the first level you get to fight a boss, and this is not present on PSP, so PCSX2 wins this round. Liberty City Stories has been ported to PS2, iOS and Android, but nowhere else, which is strange. Rockstar must love not making money. At least we have emulation, and on PPSS PP it runs beautifully. It never wavers below the standard frame rate, although 30 is a bit low these days. On PCSX2 we can scarcely get 30. There's lots of slowdown around the mansion, but there are other areas that have similar performance issues. Cutscenes are probably the worst though. <laughs> so listen, Tony, I know you did a good thing first. I know you've been lying. The PS2 version doesn't even look that much better, although it appears to have a slightly better draw distance, but on the other hand, the game has a better color palette on PSP. The main drawback of the PSP version is that you can't control the camera. But even so, PPSS PP wins this one. Twisted Metal Head On is a really fun game, especially when played on the go. The problem is, audio effects aren't working on PPSS PP. Just listen for yourself. And here's the game on PCSX2. Burnout Dominator is so good, and I love it. It renders near perfectly on the PSP emulator, with just a few minor bugs here and there. PCSX2 has only one flaw, but unfortunately it's a big one, and it breaks immersion completely. The lighting is busted, as you can see here. And it's really such a pity, because the PS2 version has better physics and smoother controls. I suppose we'll have to wait for an update to fix the game on PCSX2. MotorStorm Arctic Edge is perhaps the best looking PSP game of all time. And on the emulator, it looks even more amazing. Honestly, the developers used black magic to attain this level of detail. My only complaint is the audio design. The sound of the engines can become very annoying after a while. This is how the game sounds on PCSX2. It's not nearly as monotonous. Here's a very quick comparison. Notice how closely the two versions match each other in terms of graphical fidelity. The PSP version lacks reflections and shadows are more complex on PS2, but overall they are almost even. In the attack run, I've got to take out those missile launchers. Copy that, Chief. Somalis have taken over the ship's weapon systems? They won't have them for long. Splinter Cell, Logan's Shadow is a stunning return to form on the PSP, and it really looks good when upscaled. It has slightly awkward controls, because aiming is done with the circle, triangle, square, and X buttons. It's not ideal, but it works, and you get used to it. The PS2 version has a conventional control setup, where you aim with the right analog stick. However, that's where the advantage ends. I experienced several frame drops while playing on PCSX2. The game was never unplayable, but performance just wasn't where it should be.
Vice City Stories looks even more impressive than its predecessor, and the world is definitely more colorful as well. This time, however, the game runs well on both emulators. It's baffling, since I can't explain why Liberty City Stories chugged so miserably on PCSX2. Has anybody noticed these fern-like textures on the roads though? They look so wrong, and yet they are everywhere. While jumping. More monsters! Press the button and give them the old spin kick! While The Lost Frontier is the weakest entry in the Jack and Daxter franchise, it's still a decent experience. As for emulation, there's nothing to report, really. The game runs fine on both emulators. The only differences are the controls, which are slightly better on PCSX2 due to the right analog stick, and the PSB version seems to have more bloom in specific areas. I'm sure there are more differences, and if enough of you guys request it, I'll make a full comparison video in the future. Size Matters feels like a budget release of the popular Ratchet & Clank franchise. The environments are not as detailed as on the PS2 exclusives, but it's a fun game for fans. However, I prefer the PS2 version, simply because the field of view is pulled back further. This makes the game feel less claustrophobic and gives me a better idea where the enemies are. And on PS2, the game makes full use of the right analog stick, which makes it far easier to control on PCSX2. Over a year ago I made a comparison video on Siphon Filter Dark Mirror. Back then the game had an issue on PPSSPP where lights were visible through walls. As you can see, the problem has been fixed. The emulator now runs the game perfectly. The game looks pretty similar on both emulators. Obviously the graphics are a little bit better on PCSX2, but it's the controls that makes PCSX2 vastly superior. It doesn't have the performance issues that plague Logan's shadow, so it wins this round easily. Alright, now I will just show the honorable mentions. These are perfectly fine, and they all perform well, but they're just not marquee titles. So I'll just put them side by side for your mild amusement.